Hi, today we're gonna to start chapter three. We just wrapped up chapter two, and in chapter two we studied um, graphical representation of data. In chapter three, we're gonna study numerical representation of data. Descriptive measures, sometimes I refer to it as numerical, uh, numerical summaries. So um, we are gonna start with thinking about where the center of the data is. Uh, so for example, this becomes an important concept. You can learn a lot about a population just by understanding the center of, the, of, of their distributions. Here's an example. Uh, if I told you I was working with a group of humans and their, uh, and their mean weight was, or their, the, their center of their weight was eight pounds, and you would know that we're talking about little babies, really little babies, right? Um, so center does um, give us a lot of information, and so we're going to jump right in. I have a data set here. This is, if you're following along in the notes, um, page 21 of the packet that has um, chapters one, two, three in it. So if we're, um, we have two teams. These are basketball teams. And what I have displayed here are the heights of the basketball players. Um, these are in inches. So some of us maybe are pretty excited about basketball. Those guys, whoever you are out there, um, if you can um, think about which of these teams has an advantage, right? You look at the heights of the players. So maybe I see that team two might have an advantage because team two has a tall player at 84 inches. And just to have that one tall player, that might help, right? It might help to, might be an advantage. I see we also have a shorter player, right? And maybe that guy's really fast. So, you know, let's see. Well, what I want to do is I want to calculate three measures of center for each team and try and understand if those measures of center help us to kind of figure out which of these teams does have an advantage or see if it um, makes it clear what that idea that we have that one tall guy and maybe that is helpful for that team. Okay, so I'm going to summarize our results here. We are going to work with uh, mean, median, and I'll describe, I'll define all of these and help and we'll calculate them, and mode, and we're going to do that for team one. And we're going to do that for team two. Okay, so do the calculations here and then store our results on the other side of the board. Mean. To calculate the mean, we want to add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of observations. So we have the mean for team one is going to be equal to 76 plus 72 plus 78 plus 76 plus 73 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and you can add all that up and divide by 5. We get 375 divided by 5, and that gives me 75. So the mean for team one is 75. And now please go and let's calculate the mean for team two. And that's also 75. So we see no difference in the means from team one to team two. So while we might have thought that team two had some kind of advantage because it had a really tall 
player on it. It's not coming through with the mean calculation. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about the median. So the median is the center observation. So what we need to do is order them. And as we talked about when we were talking about stem and leaf, sometimes it's hard to order data points. Um, and if you have a large data set, you might want to uh, put the data into the stem and leaf to help you out with that. But in this case, we only have five points. So I'm just going to order them here. So this is the same data, only we can order it. So we get 72, 73, 76, 76, and 78 for team one. And for team two, we have 67, 72, 76, 76, and 84. Okay, so um, we're going to find the middle data point and to find the middle data point, in this case, we have in both situations, we have n equals five. And by the way, this is that first um, notation in the course. And the little n will uh, represent the size of a sample. And that's going to be the case all the way through, um, all the way through all the formulas in the class. We'll always be referring back to a size of a sample and we'll use the letter n for it. So n equals five, and uh, um, the location of the median is n plus one over two. Okay, so we have five plus one over two, that's six over two or three. Three is not the median, but it gives us the location of the median. So we come on over here to the beginning of the data set and we count in until we get to three. One, two, three. So we see that the median for team one is 76. And because team two has the same number of observations, there's five observations, the location of the median for team two is also going to be the third data point. One, two, three, also 76. So what we see again is that the measure of center median does not differentiate team one from team two. So whatever we're looking for that makes team, one, team two seem somewhat better, it isn't coming through with this measure of center. Um, I'm going to take a little break from the from these these guys because I want to also show you how to find a median if there were so what actually back up we notice that n is odd and so n plus one is even and when we divide by two we get an, an integer right so if n was even when we did this calculation n plus one over two, we would not get an integer. So let's do an example when the number of observations in the sample set, in the sample um, is uh, even. So for some reason, let's say that we don't know why, but suppose team three, it has six, six players on there and we want to look at the, um, the median of team three. So team three has these uh, heights, 70, 71, 72, 75, 76, and 77. We're gonna go through this calculation, but this time N doesn't equal five, N equals six. So the location of the median is in n plus one at n plus one over two. So we get six plus one over two, which gives me seven over two or 3.5. So now when I go to count in, I'm not going to hit 
um, one of the points exactly. One, two, three, three point five, right between these two guys. So what you do in this case, when the number of observations is um, ah, even, and hence the location of the median is between two values, is you take the average of the two values. You're gonna add them up and divide by two. So in this case, my median for team three is gonna be 72 plus 76, excuse me, 72 plus um, 75 divided by two. And that gives me 73.5. Yeah, that should be right. Okay. So sometimes when the number of observations is even, you have to have do this extra little bit of work to come up with the median. But let's go back to team one and team two and talk about what the mode is and see if the mode helps us distinguish between the two, um, the two teams. So I'm gonna erase team three, erase about the median, and look at what the mode is. So the mode is the value in the data set that appears most often. So in this case, um, we look at our data, we see that for team one, 76 appears two times. So that's our mode because all other values only appear once. Um, if all values only appeared once, there would be no mode. If you are in the situation where some values appear uh, three times one value one value appears three times and another value appears three times and three is the most then you have two modes you can have a, a distribution with that is bimodal with two modes but in this case we have one mode at 76 for team one we have another mode at 76 for team two and so what we see is that for our, two, for our two teams that are listed up here, the measures of center do not differentiate the two teams. They do give us a, a good understanding of about how tall the players are. And that's really what measure of center does. And we hope in the next video, in the next section, that we'll get a little closer to what's going on with our basketball teams.